All right. Thank you so much for joining this episode of the Positioning to Profit podcast. This is episode 87. And I will say that this is probably my signature podcast episode. It is a saying that I am known for. Anybody who has received any coaching from me will hear me say time and time again, just ship it. And this episode is explaining the concept a little bit and uh, a very telling share that I posted in a group that I'm in, in a marketing group that I'm a coach in. And we were just dying laughing at how things have changed. And I'll explain a little bit more. The concept here around Just Ship It is how to know when it's okay to put your product out there, to put your course out there, to put your offer out there, to put your lead magnet out there, to put your message out there, all of it. Uh, That's what we're going to be covering on this episode. But before I go there, before I go into my Just Ship It rant, I want to share with you, do not forget that I have something really special called The Cafe Call. Uh, So if you go to thecafecall.com, you'll find the landing page on that. It is, the Cafe Call stands for C-A-F-E, Corrective Action, Faster Earnings. Cool, right? So it's basically an acronym and it is an AMA, Ask Me Anything style call that I'm doing open. So you just have to show up, which is super exciting. And the next one that I'm doing is March 24th at 4.30 p.m. Central Time. You are invited. And this is so good for you if you are suffering from random acts of marketing and aren't sure why things aren't working. I got you. Or maybe you are thinking, okay, what am I doing here? I feel like I'm stuck. I feel like there's a missing component to what I'm doing with my marketing. Join the cafe call. So any of these questions we have in a hot seat style type of Zoom call where, yes, it's not just going to be you and I, it's going to be you and whoever joins the call. It may be you and I or two people or 200. It doesn't matter. I got you all. So uh, join the cafe call. Just go to thecafecall.com for this awesome Zoom open office hours, ask me anything. I'm hosting it. It'll be awesome. Again, March 24th, 4.30 p.m. Central Time. It'll be a riveting good time and I look forward to seeing you there. Okay, and with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the actual show and here we go. Hey there, I'm Patty Dominguez. You're about to discover what it means to position your brand and your business to stand out. This show explores the stories of small business owners just like you who are bringing their message out to the world and impacting their tribe. So if you want to take your business to a category of one status, then hang with me because this podcast shares everything you need to know about how to be more prolific with your brand so that you can have more profits. Okay, well, thanks for joining me on this episode. Today, I'm going to be sharing um, a concept that I say over and over again to the people that I coach in my group, only because I come from a place of knowing I suffered from this once upon a time where I would delay. I would delay putting things out there. And I've been coaching since 2013, so thousands and thousands of hours at this point. And one of the things that I see glaringly Uh, where there's a gap is that people don't take action fast enough. And so what happens as a result of that is that we find reasons to procrastinate. And it is so true that when you're overthinking and you are, as I say, getting ready to get ready, we really put a gap in our flow of success that is possible. And so what I mean by that is from an entrepreneurship standpoint, you have to be nimble. You have to put your product out there. So that's why I say just ship it. Okay, so here's the deal. 62% of adults believe that entrepreneurship is a good career. Okay, so I saw this in a report according to Hill, to The Hill. It also says that 582 million entrepreneurs in the world. Okay, so this is something that is just rising, especially with everything going on um, in this day and age with the economy, etc. More and more people are looking at entrepreneurship and really seeing it as a viable option. Where some people really fall short is that they don't understand that the comparison is when you were in a job, you could be in the job in the nine to five, and then it didn't matter because every two weeks you got a paycheck, right? 
because I experienced that for quite a while. So some weeks I would be super productive because perhaps I had a project that I had to complete. And then there were other times that inevitably I'm like, I'm just not feeling it. And I wouldn't put the like 100% effort in what I was trying to accomplish and trying being the operative word, which I hate that word, but literally that's how I would operate sometimes. But it didn't matter because at the end of the pay period, I still got my paycheck. And because I was on salary, it would be the same paycheck. Conversely, with entrepreneurship, especially if you're a newer coach or you haven't been in business that long, we are compensated. We are paid for the value that we bring to the marketplace. And so where people fall short is that they feel the need to perhaps over perfect to say, is this product, is this group coaching, is this thing that I'm putting out there, does it have everything that it needs? And I have to tell you, we don't know unless we put it out there, unless we test and verify. So we were going through this very topic in a group coaching program that I'm a coach in, and I happened to have posted this um, post from the CEO of LinkedIn. He said, he said, if you're not embarrassed by the first iteration of your product launch, then you launched too late, right? You waited too long. And I'm paraphrasing that, but I thought that that was such a great quote. I posted in the group and so so it went. Lots of different commentary on like, wow, this is really telling or wow, it's so true. And so, so a couple of the entrepreneurs in the group who have, who have been in entrepreneurship quite a while, we posted our videos, our old cringy videos from 2012 and 2013. And you really start to look at, my gosh, I can't believe that I had that content out there once upon a time. So the example that I posted, it was a course that I had put together on branding and it was such a disaster. I told the story of how I had spent, I think it was like $2,000 in ads and I was so excited about it and I had prepared, you know, taking copious notes of what the slides were going to look like and what I was going to say on each slide and and really over perfecting the slides in itself, right? So I set up the whole thing. I got ads. I had, well, like at the time, this is pretty good, like 200 people to join and I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like this is it. I'm going to sell my course, I knew that a percentage would be completely enthralled enough to say, yes, I want this, right? So come come the day of the recording, I recorded it live. Obviously, I had a, an audience, 200 people. I start talking. I go into my slides and I was so concerned about what I was saying on the slides that I didn't realize that on the receiving end, all those people were only seeing a black screen and my slides weren't showing up. I didn't pause and take a breath to realize that nobody could see the slides. I wasn't paying attention to people who were watching it or any comments that were coming in. So I just went through the slides because I was dying to get through them. And what happened? Everybody dropped off. And when it was time for me to say, just go to this link and buy, (laughs) I go back over to the chat and I realized that nobody had seen and like a good 90% of my presentation and it all fell short. I had put in all my basket, like all my eggs in the basket wanting to launch this. And then I immediately went into this. Why did this happen to me? I'm not good enough. Oh my God, I failed. I wasted $2,000 and I didn't really understand how it worked because it was just me putting it out there and not knowing all of these things that as much as I try to over perfect and prepare, there's just things that come up and you never know what's going to come at you unless you put things in live mode, right? Hitting the go button, just shipping it. And that was such a, a great example of the way that I managed that circumstance back then during that time. I was devastated. I was crying. I talked to (laughs) this guy. I was in a mastermind group at the time. I was about to jump off the cliff pretty much. And it was so sad the way that I was carrying on. So I look back at that and I remember the videos that I had posted. So we were talking about this in the group. And then I posted the video like on the thank you page. And it was so ridiculous. It was so cringy. I was talking about nonsense. 
But at the same time, as we were all laughing about it and just saying, my gosh, why was I talking about ink cartridges on my thank you page and being all concerned about ripping through ink and like, I'm trying to save your ink. It was so ridiculous. So so long story short, I stopped and I reflected in that moment of how grateful I was because that was back in 2014. And since then, I mean, it's 2021. Again, I have been on my own since 2013. And it's been the greatest roller coaster ride ever, as I always say. Uh, it's amazing. And so one of the things that has made the difference and why I think this is all amazing is the ability to realize that you just have to ship it. So all of these things of holding on and over perfecting it, having it be just right, I got to tell you, you're wasting your time. Instead, just put your stuff out there and recognize that any feedback that you get is exactly that. It's feedback. There is no good. There is no bad. It's just feedback. So I will say that all of that, it like was a gift, the the whole process of me putting a video out there. And as cringy as it is, when I look at it now, I recognize that when you start something, and this is something else I say, is when you start something, you're going to suck at it because it's just a fact. You're going to suck at it until you suck less. And then you start to kind of enjoy it. And then you don't suck at all. And then you get pretty dang good at it. So I have to tell you, if you're holding on for dear life and buying yet another course, because this is something else that came up, I've been there. I get it. Is that maybe if I buy this course, this will be the secret of what I'm missing in order for my product or service or group coaching or whatever it is that you're putting out there to be perfect. And the fact of the matter is, it's not. Just ship it. Just put your stuff out there. That's going to give you more feedback than you buying yet another course and delaying this process of putting yourself out there. When you do these things, when you give in to what I call coursearitis, you're just giving in to another reason to procrastinate and you're giving in to another reason to put off going live, just shipping it. And you're compromising that. So I have to tell you, It is an insidious little strategy that you may be using to procrastinate that you're not even realizing that you're doing that. So stop, let your credit card cool off, (laughs) don't buy anything else and recognize that chances are you have just what you need to just ship it. So I wanted to give you and share that story with you to understand that you're going to suck at it at the beginning. And and as I know from my mentor, Jim Fortin, who says, nothing has any meaning but the meaning we give it. So you will fail. You will. It's just part of it. But don't think of it as failure. Just think of it as feedback, right? Just flip the script on that concept and realize, I'm like, okay, well, that didn't work. Or for me, when I did my video or my, excuse me, my webinar and it completely flopped, I could have just said, okay, well, what was it about the way that I ran it that didn't work? And instead I hid away and I was so upset about it and so distraught and so embarrassed and all these ridiculous feelings when all I had to do was just say, okay, well, what was it about that technology that didn't work? And then now, because this happens to me all the time, I'll have tech that doesn't work. We have to pivot. Things flop. I will run ads and it is a failure. I mean, all of it. Everything happens all the time. So it's the equivalent of if you go up to bat 10 times, recognize that you're not going to get a hit 10 out of 10, right? If you think about it, professional baseball players will hit three out of 10, and they are pros. So you have to understand that this is all part of the game of putting yourself out there. And so that's why with entrepreneurship, really, when you think about it, you know, 582 million entrepreneurs in the world, most of them fail in their first year because they go through these type of circumstances. They're living by circumstance when they fail at something. And then they say, oh, I just can't do it. It's not for me. And that's just simply not the truth. What you may be lacking is the experience of putting that thing out there or the systems in your business. So just be curious, be more curious, if anything, of what it is that uh, how how you can pivot, how you can change things uh, in a way that is going to serve you. So just remember that you have to put real context to what you're doing. And when you have systems in play, just follow the systems. Don't delay. Don't give in to coursearitis or all of these tactics of procrastination. And instead, just look at it. Set a date 
and then put yourself out there because that is one thing that I may talk about positioning to profit all day long, but you can't position yourself unless you're out there. And so this is just a friendly reminder of a topic that came up that I thought was really timely. And I am so glad that I did mention it because it resonated with so many people in the group. And the smart feedback, I want to say, the smart feedback of people realizing and even comments of people saying, I didn't realize that you were that bad. (laughs) You know, and people really looking at the content that we were putting out there and a fellow coach, Lisa Carpenter, putting her stuff out there and she looked robotic, you know, and we just laughed at it. And at the same time, I'm so grateful that I've been through all of those experiences because you get to recognize just how far you have come. And so if you haven't done that already, do it because you're going to look back at your early content and your cringe. (laughs) And even in the way that Lisa expressed it, she said, oh my gosh, putting myself out there in this way. It's so like, I feel so exposed. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't agree with you more. It's embarrassing. You know, it just, it makes you like, oh my God, I can't believe I put this out there. But at the same time, what a gift to show to show you just how far you've come. And so with that, I want to remind you, if you are delaying, if you are procrastinating, if you're overthinking, if you're overperfecting, you're just delaying the opportunity to get that thing out there that that your audience, your raving fans are ready to receive. So just ship it. Don't delay. And so I hope this connected with you. I hope this connected the dots for you. If you are looking for uh, help, don't forget about the cafe call, the cafe call.com. Corrective action, faster earnings is what the CAFE stands for. And it's just my way to give back, um, to help people where they're stuck in the random acts of marketing and whatnot. So if you're interested in that, I can help you to get beyond the stuck and uh, you're going to find all the details there at thecafecall.com. All right, so we'll see you next time. And as always, if this resonated with you, connect with me on social media, Instagram, and tag me. Tag me on your post, excuse me, and let me know what you thought about this video and let me know when you are going to ship it. All right, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for checking out the Positioning to Profit podcast. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new episodes. And also, it would mean the world to me if you would take a quick moment to leave a rating and review on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast player. It really helps to get the word out about the podcast and of course, the featured guests. And lastly, please make sure to connect with me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm on all of them and use hashtag positioning to profit so that I can (laughs) search you out and connect that way too. All right. Thanks so much. See you next time.